Hello YouTubers, today we are doing brakes again, seize caliper once again on uh, 2008 Passat, one of them stupid <laughs> things with the stupid push button in handbrake. Oh, so, um, basically broke down right outside my garage, lucky for her and me. Um, and obviously this is absolutely seized, smoke on fire more or less, blah 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 blah. So the caliper's gone. Now she's had problems with the back calipers, the stupid push button handbrakes are f but anyway. Um, so what we need to do on this, obviously, we need to replace pads and discs um, because the discs are just, they've just got completely reddened and you can see they're all discolored here. Or you can see, you can see the red, it might not show on camera, but there's all, there's like a red bluey ring around it where it's just got that hot, it's just warped. So replacing the caliper, pads and discs, and obviously the uh, pads and discs on the other side. So, straightforward enough. The thing we need to do first is take off the caliper and then hope we've got the right parts. As you know, I've been with parts in these last few videos and she needs this back tonight because she's got a higher car, so crack on. Now, all we need is obviously a 7mm Allen key to take off the caliper. Now, like I said on all the other videos, you have to clean these, but we get them, we get new ones with the new caliper, so. Now, I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but basically you can see this like blue color on the actual caliper. It's got that hot, it's actually burnt the rust off the caliper and it's turned it blue. So enough to do a bit of toast. Now they're both off, so this should come off. Now I can't push the piston back because obviously it's seized, so this uh, take the spring off this side. Simple enough. What can I do you for John? <coughs> that was John's contribution to the video. watch a man at work and here you see John big fat John in his native area he is on the floor with his arse sticking out pumping up a tire this now is a sight to behold this has never been for filmed in the wild an animal such as this we have to be careful and quiet so we don't spook the beast that is John. And one day he might find a mate to do this with. And if we can film that too, that would be fantastic. <laughs> now. We'll continue before I got distracted there. Now this should come out, it might just be a bit tight, but... With a bit of wiggling, you'll get it. Kind of stuck. So, what do you do? You get a bigger lever bar rather than a spanner. And we'll get it off with this fella. Oh, yeah. Power. Oh. Um, one caliper is completely seized. Uh, one pad 
obviously I put their marks on it, but you can see it's just gone horribly hard. This one has the brake sensor on, that's why it's obviously hanging down like that. This other pad, again, same thing, it's gone all hard, brittle, no good, even though obviously there was a good bit left on it, but stuff now I don't know why Volkswagen put these stupid clips on because um, they're annoying but it's just a clip you can see that on the end so it just tells you when your brake pad is worn down and ready to change them but it's only on one side so if the other side go first you don't know it's you either have them on both sides or don't put them on at all but hey, what do I know? Now, as we can see, it actually turns. Next thing we need to do, and I always get to do it, and I forgot again, is to take out this before you take off the caliper. Well, actually, no, sorry. I can wedge a screwdriver in between the carrier and the disc brake, so we sorted. Okay, so what I'm going to get is just a flat bladed screwdriver, wedge it between the, the disc and when it comes down it'll hit the, the carrier and I'd say this is a T30 torque. So here's T30. Yeah, T30 so I can literally now, it was loose anyway but I can twist it off obviously releases the disc. Now what you can do on some of these, as you can see, we can do it on this one. Sometimes you have to take the carry off, sometimes you don't. You've actually got enough room to lift the disc. Well, actually I say that, you haven't. Okay, my mistake. You're close though, to be able to do it. But anyway, as you can see, sometimes you can literally just kind of twist the disc to the side and it will uh, release but unfortunately on this one we can't so we'll just turn it back around again I'll get you underneath now to see whether well actually can you see him there Move my hand oh you can big bolt there big bolt there them two bolts my hands out of the way this bolt here and the bolt there once we take them off the carrier comes off sorted they look like 22s but anyway like I said, the 21s. Don't make mistakes here. Just move that out of the way for the minute. Get the air gun on that, pop them off. As you can see, this is the carrier and that's the disc. Now, it might not come through, but that is completely kind of bluey, reddy color. It's just completely and utterly got red hot and, and burnt through, basically. What we need to do now is we need to get a wire brush and just wire brush inside where the brakes go, the brake pads go on the carrier. So I can do that, get everything ready and uh, turn the camera back on. Now, as you can see, I've just put the disc on and all I've done is just put the little screw back. Um, basically, I've checked the disc as regards the other one. Obviously, the holes line up so you know it's right. I checked the amateur and everything, so we're sorted. Um, what I'm going to put on next is the carrier. And like what I've already done is I've already cleaned the two ends, so we're just going to bang this on next. Now, as you can see, I'm just basically putting the carrier back on. Again, do everything by hand first. Thanks, John. wheel just moved on its own amazing now screw these as best you can by hand make sure they're both in before you get the air gun on them the only reason I'm putting the air gun on these is because they're a really thick bolt and I know I'll get away with it I'm still going to tighten them by hand just to make sure that they're right. So just got my long ratchet 
and literally just checking them. That one's good. And that one's good. Now, the next thing we need to do is obviously prepare the pads. So, like I always do, a bit of copper grease on the edges of them first. Make sure you don't put it on the pad. Yeah, make sure you don't put it on the pad. So, it's on the edge. You can put a little bit on here, but it doesn't really matter. I like to put it on there first. And then I like to um, put it in. It just saves your hands getting all greased up. But then some people might like getting their hands greased up. Isn't that right, John? Hey. Now the next one, obviously, because it's got this clip in, it has to fit into the caliper first before we can't just put it on there because it has to go inside the caliper. Still the same way though, we, we gunk it all up though. I can actually do all this. Gunk it all up. And then I have to put it inside the caliper, put this line going out. But obviously I have to put the caliper on first before I can do that. And I turn the uh, wheel toward me though. Can I? John? Huh? Can I turn the wheel? Well, oh, thank you, Bob. Sorry. Yes, carry on. Come on. I'll stand around doing nothing as usual. I'll just be here for enough, John. Thanks. Now, we're lucky enough, uh, YouTubers, in the sense of, hopefully you can see that, the, we can put this caliper on because of the way we've got another banjo bolt on this so I'm going to crimp the wire with the special tool so it doesn't do any damage then I can release the, the bolt which is a 10 mil or 11 mil so I'll just slide that on if you can see what I'm doing there so you can see I've just put that on and take that off and put the new caliper on now it's an 11 mil Go. Now, I did one of these not so long ago, and like I said, there's special uh, washers on both sides of these. So you want to be careful when you take it off. For a second. When you take it off, there's a washer on that side, and there's a washer just underneath the nut. They're copper washers, so they're not an ordinary washer. If you put a normal washer in, it'll leak. You want to make sure you put the, prop, the, the washers are there. And also, this is a banjo bolt. And what I mean by a banjo bolt is you don't play it. There's a hole in the middle of it. Yeah. So you have to be careful when you tighten it and loosen it. You can, you, you can easily break these. You can't play the dueling banjos on them. Squeal like a piggy, boy. <laughs> Squeal. Squeal. Now. Obviously, I've checked this against the old one, and you can, well, we know it's the right one. Um, on the last video, you can see I had problems with the back caliper. We had to change a few things around. So it's always good to check these things. But what you have to make sure is, obviously, because there is a left and a right caliper, you need to make sure the bleed nipple is on the top. So when you put the caliper in, the bleed nipple's on the top. The bleed nipple goes on the bottom, you can't bleed it properly, because all the air will go to the bottom. So you know you've got the right, right or wrong one. Um, so yeah, so we know the bleed nipples at the top and this connection here at the end is where the actual brake line goes into. So there's a little rubber thing here which I'm going to take off. What do you want? Grease? No, the blue thing. The blue thing? They can hear you by the way. But they can't see me. They can't see you but they can hear you. <laughs> so yeah, um, so there we go. And obviously this is more or less pushed all the way back. So we know we're gonna be good. Now what happens with most brand new calipers is when you buy them, you have to return the old one. So don't just throw out the old one because there is a surcharge. If you don't give them back the old one, it can charge you well anywhere from, well, it depends where you are, but between 50 to 80 euros over here, they'll charge you extra if you don't give them the old caliper back. So what we need to do now is get the pad and obviously the caliper, and we need to push the spring through the caliper. <coughs> Now, that's in, as we can see, this is the wire for the sensor. So that's now in. Now we can put this on the car. 
And just be careful you don't trap this wire in the wrong place. So you have to kind of hold the wire out of the way. And as we can see, that's just slotted on really nice. I'm going to put this wire on now before I forget, just so I know it's on. And again, you'll hear a click, you know it's in. Put the two new screws in. We're clearing close. Now, so what we get, we get a brand new clip. Shiny. We get the two new bolts. And we get a little pack of grease that we put on the bolts. Might as well use them. Oh, I just lost the sneeze. Is it annoying when you lose a sneeze? All right, a bit of grease. And literally just splash it all over. You don't want to be sparing with this stuff. Not to do any harm, better. In this case, I have too much and not enough. Then you just push it through the hole, line it up. Same this one. Luber up. Can't be a bit of lube in that right, John? No? Jonathan? Hello? Can't be a bit of lube. That's it. She's all lubed up. Yeah. A bit of lube for penetration is grand. Now, I'm going to turn the wheel now, tighten them up. We're getting there. Now, what I'm going to do before I tighten up the caliper, I'm just going to put this spring in. Uh, which can be annoying and it can hurt if it slips out. So push one end in, try and bend it under out. And hopefully, oh, there we go. Oh. So I push one end in, the other end in the hole. I'm trying to bend the top of that out while keeping it in the hole. Is it easy? Now, oh, got it. That's an anti-rattle clip, so it is important you uh, put them on, otherwise you can get like a rattle. Now, so I'm just going to tighten these two bolts here, as you can see. I know they're in line, so give them both a little nip. And then, like you never tighten anything until you know you've got both of them in, or however many there is. squeeze I've just pushed the clip in at the top there and another squeeze so I've just got to put these two little rubber bungs in on the bottom that just stops the little allen key heads getting all f***ed up with muck so you can take them on and off easier next thing to do is what we need to do is put the obviously the brake line back there's a little cutout on the brake line, which is a little bar sticking out of the caliper. And like I said, that just goes in. And um, like I said, you just have to be careful in tightening it because it's only a banjo bolt and it can break really easy. But obviously you need it tight enough not to leak but not too tight where it snaps. Now, that's it. So now what I'm going to need to do is obviously release this. And then I'm going to let it... I'm going to let it gravity bleed so what that means, basically what that means is it's going to open the nut, and I get the right size spanner, it's going to open that and basically wait till the fluid starts dripping out. Once it drips out I'm going to tighten it back up, because John's here today and I do it kind of the old fashioned way so I'll show you uh, um, 
how to do it to someone else with you. I don't think I've done that. I've done a video on how to bleed on yourself if you've got one of them pumps, um, but I haven't done a video on doing it with someone else, I don't think. So, seems like I've got John here, we'll do that. So I'll turn it back on when that starts. It's in out. Now, as you can see, the fluid is drip, dripping constantly, so I'm just gonna tighten that back up. Now, that's most of it is good enough, but it's always best to double check. So, um, so get John in the car and we'll do it the old fashioned way. Right, so we're ready to bleed it. This is where you need good communication between you and whoever's doing it. This could be difficult. Basically, what John is doing now is inside the car. Well, as you can actually see, he's technically not. He's pressing it with the bar, but you get the idea. Um, if you jump up, John, we can't see your legs and then uh, we might be able to get away with it. <laughs> so what he's gonna do is he's gonna put pressure on the brake pedal. And I'm gonna open up the, the bleed nipple and then the pedal go all the way down. But obviously the fluid will come out. So he's got pressure on it now. If you put my finger over it so it doesn't squirt on the camera. Now, as you can see, a bit of air came out there and it's constant fluid. So there was a bit of air, even though it was dripping, there was still a bit of air. He's now going to pump it because the pedal's going to go soft. That's about five or six pumps, it's going to get hard. Once it goes rock hard, he's going to tell me. So you have to wait. Okay, it's gone hard. I'm going to do it one more time. Now, as you can see, pure fluid. It was a nice colour, not black, no air, air bubbles in it. So we're sorted. He's now going to pump that until it goes hard again. It's now hard, yeah. sorted. Put the cap back on. Make sure you've got no, uh, make sure you've got no brake fluid on the brakes or anything because obviously you're not going to stop. So I'm going to make sure it's all nice and clean. Now look. Simple as that. So, I'm gonna get uh, John to sign off for me. He doesn't know yet, but he's standing beside me, so we'll see if we're gonna do it. And uh, yeah, so John, John. Goodbye. No, can't just say goodbye, come on. Sign off. John. <laughs> just say, hope it helps. Subscribe and like. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, yeah. good luck. So that's obviously all we're going to get. I'm not going to do it now. Okay. Hope you liked the video. Thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.